Ooh, welcome everyone to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer Dog? Merry Cream Dog Christmas. Uh, well, I, you know, I don't know about Merry Cream Dog Christmas, but Merry Christmas. Merry Cramness. Almost happy, ha- happy New Year. And wow. once again, I'm noticing I, right now. I gotta, I gotta turn the. Ne- I got a little stiff neck right now, so I gotta turn the neck all the way around to look at. Sh- although, technically, I just have to look at my computer to look at Sean to see Sean's beautiful face. He's way behind me because once again. Someone puts their personal travel schedule ahead of the podcast. <laughs> I don't know. How was your Christmas, have, Sean? <laughs> Christmas was great. Um, yeah. Was up in the uh, beautiful Fresno area, hanging out at a La Quinta in Fresno. Top notch, five stars. Got to hang out with the nieces and then uh, flew back to the East Coast where, uh, yeah, where I'm broadcasting in my dad's uh, office here. And yeah. A lot of Eagles talk, a lot of hype, uh, breaking down the Eagles. But enough about our holidays, Ryan. Joining us for the college football playoff preview and part three of the Bulls. We haven't even, we got like 20 bowl games left and the college football playoffs. So, of course, in studio, as always, to talk college football, Colby Dan, a.k.a. the Danta Base. What's up, guys? How's it feel What's over up? there, Colby? Oh, you you're know, in the big dog seat. I, I, you know, it's, I'm feeling better. I'm healthier. Spent, uh, wow. You know, Went to uh, Kaiser Permanente. Finally used that health insurance for the first time in 10 years. How about that, Colby? I don't recommend so you, it. So you have health insurance, and yet you went, uh, what did you say, 26 days with a sore throat <laughs> before going to a doctor. I did. Uh, how, how was the experience? It was horrible. I should have just went to Mexico, you know, and much better, much better planning because I get the Kaiser, and they tell me it's going to be a three-hour wait before I see somebody at the urgent care. They recommend that I sit in this room with like 50 sick people, which I don't do. I stand outside of that sick room because, you know, I saw outbreak, right? But I'm outside. I'm outside of well, this. Also, Colby, you are the guy who's had a sore throat for 26 days, so <laughs> they're probably thinking the same thing. They're like, "Who is this guy that's coughing everywhere?" Wow, we didn't have to even have to tell him to to quarantine himself. He just went right outside. Station <laughs> yeah, Zero, exactly. aka the Dancer Base. So look, I'm out there. I'm watching these people sitting in there, like you know, like they're sitting in the incubator, right? And I'm sitting there on the outside, and some guy sees my genius idea and he does the same thing mm. this guy a little overweight oh, okay. he got his arm in a in a in a slink <laughs> and a slinky you know what i mean and he's got a big big padding on his elbow he comes up to me starts talking i don't really want to talk because i got a sore throat of course he asked me how i'm doing i don't answer and he jumps right into telling me about his problem he says yeah man i got bit by my parrot about a month ago and i don't think i <laughs> and i and i don't think i cleaned it good enough and now my whole body's infected, right? And at this point, I, I sat there and I looked at everyone. And I was like, maybe I should get the fuck out of this room. Urgent right? care. Yeah, that's, <laughs> urgent that's care. How, Go ahead, that's Tim. how outbreak starts. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pair, unclean parrot bite. Well, and, and Ryan, ur- urgent Ryan, care. Hold please. on. Hold on. Urgent care waiting rooms are not exactly a place where you're looking to make small talk. So <laughs> there's also that element of like, well, the kind of person who's willing to make small talk. <laughs> In a medical facility waiting room. With, like, his arm up like that. <laughs> look, dude, you should have gone after day six. That's your lesson. No, no, no. Right? I should have went to Mexico because, look, I feel like it's always like that there. All right? And then once they see me after three hours, it took, like, 30 seconds. They're like, oh, yeah. yeah. You probably have strep throat. Here's some antibiotics. Boom. Well, the way that works in Mexico is you just go to the pharmacy and buy them. And that's like what I – Exactly. Yeah. I hear you. Or you go to you go to CVS Minute Clinic and uh, yeah, buddy. I thought you, prob- I thought you had prob- problems with CVS and Walgreens. <laughs> I do. <laughs> oh, and uh, that's a uh, we. It's come full story. So <laughs> or full full circle. I, I was making a last uh, second dash to the Walgreens oh, no. to uh, <laughs> to buy all my Christmas cards, and I have a bunch of Christmas cards. And then you know, bring them up to the counter, not really paying attention. And then, uh, <laughs> and then the guy's like clicking through, like scanning, scanning. And then he's like, "Oh, hey, how's your day going?" And I look up, and eye to eye, it's Juan. They've moved him off the photo slash package area, and he's now at checkout. So it's just a solid two minutes, just super uncomfortable. Me and Juan. 
And then Ryan, I'll have you know, I was the bigger man, even though Juan is much bigger, not in uh, muscle, but in gross fatness. But um, <laughs> you just eyeballed have, his BMI. Did you give him a Christmas quick. bonus? You give him a little Christmas no, tip. I looked at I looked at him and I said Merry Christmas, and he laughed. <laughs> I love, so how, I, I, I love how you're still shopping at this place. Because for me, like, I, they burn me once. I'm not coming back. I have to well, be in now, a normally, jam. Normally, I do. I have a blacklist of stores that are just, I'm never going back in. But you also have to be realistic. I mean, the Walgreens is super convenient. And there's nowhere else I'm going to be getting these last-second Christmas cards that I didn't plan ahead at all to get. So, yeah, it's Walgreens is, um, you know, they're always going to be there. Like, yeah, pull, pull, let's pull back the current a little bit. Sean, you like this. You like the you like this masochistic <laughs> type, but you like getting beat up a little bit. But it makes you feel big, beat big up. man. I'm so, you, well, beat up. you can't shove someone in a locker until someone is presents themselves <laughs> to be shoved in a locker. But I am I, surprised knowing Sean that he's back shopping there. Like for me, Kaiser Permanente is off my list unless I get bit by a fucking yeah, parrot. But, but this you is know? the the point is that Sean likes this. Sean likes having wands. He likes in to his relish life. in it. Sean, I've never I've known Sean for <laughs> almost fifteen years, and he's always had a wand in his life for that period of time. I do. So. I do like. I do like mixing it up. You're right. I'll admit to that. Listen, I like having. Hey. Every good team has a rival, and you need a, you need a different rival to get up for these big games. Yeah, <laughs> and also he knows it's great content for the the show, so he probably felt bad that he was going out of town once again during football season. And he's like, I gotta come up with a, yeah. some content. Let me let me go shopping at Walgreens. He, he told him Merry Christmas. Didn't throw him an extra dollar or two there. Tell well, him, and that was know? the other thing. It, it seems like Juan <laughs> must have learned you're a comedian now. He immediately laughed at your joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Let's uh, before we hop into the bull picks, let's uh, we got a little contest to uh, talk about. We didn't have the winner because it was still up for grabs for week 16 of the NFL season. The free roll football contest presented by Betsperts. And uh, shout out to White's Hola, or uh, I don't know, White Shola, whatever that name is. They went 13 and two. So congratulations. Damn. Email us podcast at sports gambling podcast.com to get your free merch and a little check in on the NFL ATS contest for the leaderboard $3,500 prize pool up for grabs 60% to first 25 to second place 15 for third and fourth through eight. You will be getting some SGP merch contest runs till right after the Super Bowl. Pickmaster is in a uh, commanding lead right now at 137. D. Huffman, 55, 132. NFL Pickles, 131. Nagels Bagels, nipping at the heels, 128. Uh, and Chris Book, 40, 128. And Eraser, 101, 128. Rounding out the top is uh, M. Freeman, 5, 127. And Co. Juggalo, 127. So Pickmaster out to a big lead, but week 17 going to be tough. Uh, make sure you check out our week 17 NFL Picks podcast. And this is, uh, we're talking college football here, but. We're also running a uh, college bowl pick'em contest, which I don't think any of us are doing amazing at. But I will. We'll check over to the leaderboard again for the bowl contest: one thousand to first, five hundred to second, and one hundred to third. But those prizes double if you're also running your own college bowl pick'em through Play Balto. And I don't know why you wouldn't be. It's great, easy to set up. Uh, you can do a lot of like cool little features, like the money ball feature. I've already lost my money ball. I spent it on uh, Marshall catching seventeen oh. and a half. Thought it was a great spot. Was not, but uh, shout out to B Grace right now in the lead with eleven, and then uh, we got four guys tied for second right now with ten. So still anyone's game. A lot of bowl games left, and of course the college football playoffs as well included in there. Okay, and uh, let's do it. Let's talk about the college bowl picks against the spread. We're going to pick up with the cotton, or, yeah, cotton bowl. But before we do, of course, shout out to our presenting sponsor, mybookie.ag, where you can play when you get paid. Uh, NFL playoffs, college football playoffs. The, I mean, it's awesome for the props. Your custom prop uh, customizer. You can just build your own props. It's awesome. And again. You deposit, withdraw using cryptocurrency. Super easy. Get paid super fast. And, uh, yeah, that deposit bonus up to $1,000 when you use a promo code SGP on your first deposit. Let's do it. Cotton Bowl, December 28th, 9 a.m. West Coast kick. Arlington, Texas. Memphis, 
squaring off against Penn State. Penn State right now, minus seven favorite, minus 265 on the money line. Memphis plus 215, total sitting at 60 and a half. Colby, what are you doing? I'm on Penn State here. Um, Memphis, Mike Norvell, their head coach. I was going to say, isn't that a big deal? Yeah. They're, they're, Wasn't that with the hire of the offseason? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he Don't left you fade Florida that State. action? Yeah, I'm going to fade that hardcore. And I think Penn State's just a better team. Memphis, and you know, they've already lost to one school in Pennsylvania this year, and that was uh, Temple. Mm. Got the tar kicked out of them by a physical Temple team. Well, Memphis what? is good, right? They are good, but I, but I feel like uh, Penn State is just much more physical than Memphis is. And then you take away their the, the brains of the offense, Mike okay. Norvell. That would be my concern. Yeah. I, and I, I also think that they've probably not uh, – th- this is going to be one of those situations where we're going to see a, oh, yeah, Penn State's in a big conference kind yeah. of situation here. I think Memphis will eventually th- – this, this game will be like them climbing a mountain. And at some point they're going to slip and fall. They're going to fall down by 10, maybe 10, 17 points, and that's going to be that. Could be a blowout alert right here. Blowout alert. Well, get this well game if in we had a real playoff where Norvell would then stay at Memphis, oh, this would boy. then be a game. Uh, well, you know what? That's a you good point because I, mean? I, I think for our, I, I think we're going to have lots of time <coughs> to discuss this on our next uh, on the college football national championship preview when we walk through our actual what what the playoff could have been. But that, that's something we got to talk about. What do these coaches do when they get hired? Do they how, stick around for the playoff yeah, run? How about – well, Brian, yeah. Brian Kelly had an undefeated Cincinnati team he dipped out. That's why he'll forever be a piece of shit in my book. It does um, seem like a bitch move. Like, how yeah. can you ever be a coach that preaches, like, yeah. commitment yeah. or or, – or, Are you all in, gentlemen? This is a war. Oh, hold on. My agent closed the deal. I got to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> We are going into the battle. Well, you got, look to the man to the right, the man to the left. That is a man you're going to be in a foxhole with. Okay, hold on. It's a lot of guaranteed money. The buyout got taken care of. All right, kids, best of luck. <laughs> the when, NCAA I mean, again, should make it a rule. When we were in uh, beautiful Pullman, Washington, and on the campus of Washington State, where the people – glorious uh, uh, tour of the facilities. Tour of the glorious facilities, I should say. One of the things Coach Leach has up there is that interest is talking about something commitment is doing it yep. so how could you ever be a coach if you're uh, even this mike norvell character i yeah. get it you got to get started with your recruiting but, but stay to coach anyway penn scott, state minus seven scott frost did it right he stayed at ucf for the final game before he yeah. went to uh Nebraska. And, and dare i say this but uh, the, the only the only angle here that i'd be worried about is the, the motivation which is the big is Penn State stoked to be at the con well probably it's a big enough <laughs> it's bowl a big game enough bowl game where i think it, matters, it does yeah. matter so i, I i'm not i don't want to th- I don't want. I don't want to throw, give it away early, but th- this this was one of the first games that popped off. Spent way too much time talking about this, and Sean hasn't <laughs> even picked it yet. Yep, give me uh, give me Penn State all day here. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's it's pretty easy. I mean, Penn State is just uh, much better talent wise. I do think they'll be motivated. I do think this Penn State team thinks that they should have been kind of in the playoff. And, uh, you know, kind of in the mix there. And certainly we're right on the edge. So I, I do think they'll be they'll be super motivated. Plus, Miles Sanders breaking out in the NFL, possible ma- uh, offensive rookie of the year. They're going to want to they're going to want to honor his legacy with a uh, great bowl win here at the Cotton Bowl. But, Colby, you do not to digress much farther, but you make a great point. If there was a legit college football playoff, we wouldn't have to worry about a player sitting out and B coaches not coaching, because I think if you're in the playoffs, you would. Would yeah. fix. We kind of killed two birds with one stone there. Definitely. All right, Iowa State squares off against Notre Dame in what is known as the Camping World Bowl in Orlando, Florida. Notre Dame minus three and a half. Iowa State plus one forty-five on the money line. Notre Dame minus one seventy. Total sitting at fifty-five. Colby, what are you doing in this Camping World Bowl? I, be- <clears throat> I believe these teams have never played each other so mm. I'm, I'm 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 gonna ride the cyclones here to get up matt campbell big time coach um underrated get you, wait you don't think notre dame is gonna be up for the camping world bowl in beautiful orlando <laughs> <laughs> exactly and i think iowa state's gonna excited to be there this program's headed in the right direction campbell's staying in ames um so give me the points and, and the cyclones catching three and a half i, I like this spot for them uh it seems a bit obvious Honestly, almost but, too but obvious. Right? It's it's almost <laughs> too obvious. Yeah, I I don't see, I don't see why, I don't really get why Notre Dame is going to be interested in this game. <laughs> I, like like especially as you point out, Brian. 
I don't know what Brian Kelly's bowl record is off the top of my head. I don't think it's good. Yeah, I don't know if is it's it? top of my. I mean, look, I know, I know he, that the the my Hokies smashed I know him not, in Cincinnati. Yeah, that's one true. Year. That's true, and I I I know he's been a terrible in the postseason, if you want to call it that, the Invitational, and when they played Bama, I think he did beat LSU one year. Yeah, one of these yeah. coaches is scrappy and, and, and performs really well as an underdog. One yeah. of them, one of them uh, is, isn't going to have his team up to travel to Orlando to, to play in the Camping World Bowl. <laughs> right. How about you, buddy? Yeah, I'm going back and forth. I think, uh, yeah, I'm actually going to go Notre Dame. I kind of, I like the contrarian uh, favorite here at minus three and a half. I think they're going to be able to move the ball in them. And I, I do think, yeah, I don't know. I, I guess it's just a gut, gut handicapper showing up here. I do think, uh, I do think Notre Dame shows up. Iowa state is just not great against the spread one in four ATS in their last five games. So uh, yeah, they, they've performed certain times, but not as a, uh, not as a dog, a three and a half point dog. And Brian Kelly, let's see, he's, four uh, yeah i'm looking at like four and four last uh last eight here at notre dame and bowl games so we'll see but i i do think it's i don't know i don't think they get up for the idea of the camping world bowl but i do think that they're playing you know they're playing iowa state which is a decent enough program so it's a new uh, kick on a on a on a saturday yeah yeah you're right it feels disrespectful <sighs> I know your your uh, your Catholic with, guilt uh, is drawing you to Notre Dame. But. Yes, uh, my my uh, yeah my Irish roots won't allow me to to go against <laughs> Notre Dame. Brian, what are you doing? You're the old guy yeah. on the porch. Well, you know, yeah. right. no, they have academic standards. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, really going to help them. No. All right, <laughs> moving over to the first the, the the first responder bowl. Ryan coming in with his first sound effect. Didn't even get Danabase intro for the Danabase sound effect. Ooh. Da right. Well, what you're pulling back the curtain too far. And yes, if you're on YouTube, you won't hear it. But uh, if you're listening to the podcast, you heard the Danabase sound effect, and you heard the NFL music or whatever music I decide to put under the my bookie read because <laughs> that's the beauty of post production. <laughs> anyway. oh, okay. Well, the first responder ball kicks <laughs> off at 9:30 a.m. December 30th, West Coast time, and in horrifically ugly Dallas, Texas, Western Michigan squares off against Western Kentucky in the battle of the West minus three and a half for Western Kentucky minus 160 uh, Michigan, Western Michigan plus 135 on the money line plus 54 on the total. What does the first responder uh, bowl get? What do you get like a uh, like one of those fire axes? Like what do you, what do you give a first responder bowl game participant? Right, well, you, well, funny you ask. You get a Parkland duffel bag, a football, okay. a nine-line apparel Patriot athletic wear. Okay, mm. very cool. This is what every kid wants, a football. It, it made the Sports Illustrated five worst uh, swag bags for this year's <laughs> bowl, bowl season. So it was the number one worst swag bag. Oh, poor first responders. First responders, they need the they need cool stuff, man. Come on. And, well, they, right, they, they figured it was two uh, it was two schools that are named after states that don't exist. So <laughs> um, maybe that was why. Maybe it's because Serve Pro. What do they do for a living? Like cl unclog pipes, <laughs> right? Me yeah. What are they going to give yeah. out? Some <laughs> sludge to clear your drain? Uh, anyway, Colby. And real quick, before people are freaking out, he's screaming at their earbuds that we've skipped. The, the most important games, the semifinal of the college football playoff. We will be talking about that later. Invitational. Yeah, invitational. I'm yeah. sorry, Colby. Say that for the end. Yeah, we rapid. We're the supposed Hilltoppers to Toppers versus the Broncos. <laughs> yeah. Rapid fire. Uh, I'm, on, I'm on Western Kentucky here. Hilltoppers, I think they're the better team. I know they have Clay Helton's brother coaching. I know that's, that's a, a thing I should be scared of. But Western Michigan and Tim Lester, look, they've had a good year considering they, they've had some injuries. Their their most explosive player is out for the year, so I I and I just think Western Kentucky actually kind of flew under the radar this year. Surprised me. I think they're the better team. Give me the Hilltoppers minus the three and a half points in Dallas. So if there's one thing I've learned about bowl season, this year especially, motivation is the only thing that matters. And if you can unlock that, you're gonna be a rich person. Who has the motivation edge here, Colby? I'm gonna say Western Kentucky. 
I kind of I kind of agree they with you. They were horrible you. last year. The past two years they were I kind of agree yeah. with you. Uh, although West, Western Michigan is kind of on the up and coming, like maybe this is a real program kind of thing, right? Yeah, but th- I feel like they go bowling almost every year. It, it, th- going to a bowl matters for Western Kentucky is where I was getting to. I was yeah. taking the long route. I was I was cruising down to Pole, yeah. taking yeah. some back roads instead of doing the 405 <laughs> there, but uh, I think Western Ryan Kentucky. Loves the back roads. Not only do I think this game matters more, I do think they'll be more uh they'll be well represented we're um, agreeing a lot kentucky not as far from dallas as the common man would un- would think uh <laughs> and and last thing i'll say uh which we we kind of buried at, at the lead uh these no one's excited about the swag they're receiving here so <clears throat> i'm also gonna go chalk give me western kentucky give me the hilltoppers i believe is what they're yeah called. the hilltop great but, name great fucking name uh, what do you think? Can, can I give you one last thing? Also oh. the name of my kid's elementary school, the Hilltop. Nice. So let's nice. go Western oh. Kentucky. Nice little, uh, well, when the super fans show up at the kid's yeah. elementary school, right? Look out. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm assuming right. there's a couple of Hilltoppers they'll have to find. Well, anyway. here's the thing. This is, this is very easy to handicap. And that is the Western Michigan Broncos. They played in 11 bowl games. They've only won one of them. Western <laughs> Michigan does not show up for bowl games <laughs> And if that wasn't bad enough, they're only one four and one ATS in their last six. That is enough for me to ride Western Kentucky. Moving over to the Reebok Bowl. Oh, it's actually yeah, red, clearly- it's red box. Colby screwed that up. Oh, uh, did autocorrect? <laughs> ah, Reebok. All right, the planet's ours, right? Isn't it my planet or something? What's their what's anyway, their tagline? Sean, continue. Yeah. Rapid fire. A up and coming business that's sure to be around for a long time. Red box. <laughs> they're. Uh, December 30th, 1 o'clock, West Coast kick. Illinois squares off against Cal in, in horrific Levi's Stadium in Santa Clara, California. Cal is a 6.5-point favorite, minus 245. Illinois, plus 195, going the other way. Total sitting at 43. Cal seemingly a little bit of a home field advantage here. Colby, is that enough to cover the 6.5? No. No, it's not. Although I will say that them getting their quarterback back could could uh, really help this offense move the ball. But I think, look – Lovey has finally got the Illini in a bowl game. They're getting six and a half points. They haven't been bowling, I feel like, since fucking Jeff George was there. But, um, no, really, they, they went to the Rose Bowl, I know, in the early 2000s with Zook. But it's been a long time. They're playing for a winning record to end out the year, start next year, keep Lovey's job safe. Give me the Illini plus six and a half. Did either of you touch on the fact that one of these schools doesn't get to go anywhere for yeah, their bowl games yeah, that's, and that's the true. other gets to leave – Illinois and go to the left, the left yeah, coast. Yeah. That feels good. Also, guess guess who showed up on number four on the Sports Illustrated best swag list? Oh. The Red Box Bowl. They get a Nintendo Switch Lite, a watch, gaming headphones, a Herschel Supply Company backpack, sunglasses. Wait, wait, wait. Holy Ga- shit. Gaming headphones? I, I think you can't just, listen to music with them? Uh, you can listen to music. It's just a fancy. It, it's, it, it means they're, they're probably high quality now because gamers are the, they the should quality get of the land. only available for Redbox headphones. So, yeah, Redbox, <laughs> interesting business model. Feels like there's a limited potential there, but uh, maybe they'll pivot into something When's else. When's the last time you went to Redbox? I, I never, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, Colby, I'm not a poor person. I don't use Redbox. Uh, Illinois, <laughs> Illinois uh, they are excited to be here. I think the extra time, Lovey Smith, motivation angle, a lot of reasons why you take Illinois here. Another thing is Illinois is in the Midwest. They still believe in Redbox. Oh, ha- yeah. ha- last yeah. thing. Half the tick. This game is split 50-50 on the tickets, but 80% of the dollars on Illinois. So, uh, yeah, I'm riding. I'm riding with Illinois. Uh, I like that they're catching six and a half points. I think the motivation will be there. Not a good sign for Redbox when they don't include like a Redbox gift certificate in the <laughs> swag bag. Even Redbox knows no one wants to go to Redbox. Moving over to the Music City Bowl, Mississippi State minus four against Louisville in Nashville, Tennessee. One thirty kick, December thirtieth. Um, Mississippi State, yeah, minus four on the spread, minus 190 on the money line. Louisville, a plus 160 dog. Total sitting at 63 and a half. Colby, what are you doing here? I am all over Louisville here. This is one of my favorite plays, I think, of the bowl season. This yeah, is- I, was sh- I was shocked to think they were they were this much of a dog here, right? I think it's just a classic, oh, they're in the SEC. And, and, and I will say, I guess, the, they're in Nashville, so maybe more fans. I mean, I, Louisville's not far from Nashville either, though, but – um, I was gonna say, you know, geography, bro. Yeah. Well, I mean, I just don't think Louisville's fan base is as passionate. They haven't, you know, Mississippi State. You, you think Mississippi Bells. State's gonna be stoked about, like, they're gonna travel no matter what. 
I think it's, uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much. So because uh, the SEC is great, right, Colby? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but look, Mississippi State should not be in a bowl. If there was a nine conference schedule, they would not be bowling. Oh, they haven't beat go. many good teams. And add on this fact, their quarterback is going to miss the game because he punched uh, his own teammate. Uh, over the past week, and I believe he broke his hand. S E C. Yeah. S E C. S E C. If he didn't break his hand, I, I, I'm trying, I'm trying to remember the story. I was on a lot of medication, but he definitely is not playing because he punched his teammate. What do we learn every year about the ACC come bowl time? We always, the ACC always gets upgraded at bowl time. Well, not two, Miami. Two conferences. Miami looked like shit. <laughs> I, one of the uh, one of the beat writers for uh, Virginia Tech. Oh man, that was hilarious! Wrote himself a letter on Twitter that said, "Please don't pick. Like, please remind yourself to not pick Miami to win the Coastal next year, no matter what. <laughs> Love myself." Uh, it, it's true. They like we I mean, talk about a team that just that was my lock on the College Bowl preview part two because a motivation mine too. again motivation no, no, my, mine motivation was motivation. Yeah. Coming back to Mississippi State Louisville, I think. I expect to see the Big Ten and the ACC, as usual, ascend during – people's opinions of them will ascend during bowl season because we'll see them continually out uh, outpace the spread. And here, I think, to your, all your points, Louis, like, Mississippi State shouldn't be laying four points. They shouldn't, well, they shouldn't be in a bowl game. It's kind of the tale of, of two programs here. I feel like Louisville's taken off. It's about to get much better under Scott Satterfield. Certainly on Mississippi the right Mississippi trajectory. Mississippi State heading down with Joe Moorhead. So. Uh, I think there's, oh, there's this – perpetual problem of being the worst team in the sec west doesn't mean you're a good team yes. you know what i mean well that arkansas is well oh, sorry <laughs> being the second worst i i think there's too often this all but they're an sec squad it's like well yeah dak, dak prescott rain dakota prescott hasn't been there for some time now and yeah. that was the last time they made any noise so let's go with yeah look at, and look at mississippi state's offense only 176 passing yards a game uh 226 on the rushing yard but louisville's offense is better 32 point Six seven points per game compared to twenty seven point five eight. I think it's crazy that they're the dog here. I think the wrong team's favored. Louisville plus four all day. Moving over to the Orange Bowl, UVA squares off against Florida in Miami of Florida. Five o'clock kick on the thirtieth. Florida a huge favorite at minus fourteen, minus six hundred. Virginia plus four fifty. Fifty four is the total. Colby, what are you doing here? I'm all over the Wahoos and Bronco Mendenhall. I I'm still not a believer in in Florida's Florida was one of the like I understand that I think they're overrated but but they had three bye weeks and two FCS opponents. SEC right? SEC 14 points is too much it's too much uh Virginia played South Carolina in a bowl game last year beat them 28 nothing I'm not going to say Virginia's going to win this game but 14 points is too much I've just added this to my reminders to pull a SEC crowd chant as a drop that we need for the show going forward uh, it's really one of the more annoying things about the sec right ultra competitive college football landscape yet they all root for one another the worst was, they all yeah. root for one no, another no, no. the worst was march madness last year kentucky's playing like a 15 seed the 15 seed was playing close and and kentucky like goes on like a 10-0 run and the crowd starts chanting sec oh doyle it's rules like, dude you're playing a 15 seed you're supposed to win this game you yeah, maniacs yeah. Uh, me and Colby have both gotten in some good handshaking <laughs> gestures today, so hopefully someone can pull a good a good gif of us going like this. Uh, yeah, uh, listen, UVA has a special place in my heart uh, in terms of hatred. I, I still stand by, like, I, I, I have yet to experience a time where Virginia Tech and UVA are truly rivals because – uh, we just beat the shit out of them every year, except for this year. Thank you, Kramer FML Tour. Uh, <laughs> all of that being said, one of these teams has a great coach who will absolutely show up in this spot as a dog, and one of these teams sucks. <laughs> and they somehow went over their win total, or did they yeah. push the win total? I, I, hold on, wait. I think they – Nine and three, right? Yeah, I think they pushed, right? They pushed, yeah. but – they're just perpetually a team that doesn't get you excited. They win with talent. They don't win with coaching, and they don't win with 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 skill. Yeah. Which at this point, you're going to need to do something unless uh, unless the UVA team completely just falls off the ledge because they they were the ones that drew, drew the short star, straw and had to go get their ass beat by Clemson. Well, it is bullshit. This game's being played in Florida. You got to remember. I mean, that's the only thing when you look at these things. Again, though, yeah. is that a good thing or a bad thing for Florida? I I, I just feel like they will like here's the crowd what I will be eighty percent. 
I want the database to to, uh, to open up and do some research on teams' ATS records when they're not traveling. For the well, goal. Florida Atlantic showed up. I know. And they well, shit on game, our right? SMU. Home game. But uh, another thing is, like, we were talking Cal. Cal's on the West Coast. Cal, Cal fans aren't going to go down and drive an hour and a half to, to, yeah, to Santa Clara. You know? Flor- you think Florida will be stoked to be there? It's the Orange Bowl. This is a big deal, right? It's a, it's a prime yeah, time Yeah, I think spot. it's a big, big. But, yeah, but, they'll get up. They'll get up for it. But I still think Virginia is good enough that they're going to keep this within 14 points. Yeah, the numbers. And Virginia is going to be excited for the game as well. I mean, it is the Orange Bowl. It's kind of a prime time game. It's going to be eight o'clock on the East Coast. This is the biggest. I, I think this is the biggest thing for the football team in 20 years. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Since the Barbers were yeah. there. Yeah, it's huge. All right, guys, before we uh, break down the rest of these bowl games, and to be clear, if we go long, it's uh, it's clearly your guys' fault. <laughs> ace, ace per head. That's right, ace per head. The leader in pay per head providers. And I know what you're thinking. What is pay per head? Well, it's pretty easy. It means you get set up with your own sports book and you pay them per uh, person you sign up to the sports book. And then you cash in, you rake in the rewards of owning and operating your own sports book 2020 2020 right around the corner and you want to have 2020 vision when it comes to starting your own business you do it over at aceforhead.com slash sgp top-notch customer support uh again they grade the wagers they set up the lines all you got to do is uh find your customers and start your own sports book today why are you waiting it's even better at aceforhead.com slash sgp you'll get six weeks free that's right six weeks completely free of the premier sportsbook management software out there that's aceforhead.com slash sgp moving on to the belt bowl new year's eve 9 a.m kick kentucky squaring off against the lowly virginia tech team the hokies Minus two and a half favorites, minus 140. Uh, Kentucky plus 120 going the other way. Total sitting at 46 and a half. Ryan, which way is the Kramer FML tour going to play out here? Is it then showing up in, in dramatic fashion for a pointless game like the Belk Bowl? What happens here? Uh, you know, it, it's hard for me to factor that in to the, the handicap here because I, I think the I think you first have to look at Kentucky and identify is Kentucky. Kentucky is one of the few SEC teams that could still be stoked for a bowl appearance, regardless of what that bowl appearance is. Even if they're playing at a a noon kick on New Year's Eve, kind of a benefit. These kids want to go out and party. Nice to get the game out of the way early. (laughs) Right. Here's the problem. Here's my problem with Virginia Tech. I don't think the rest of the – I don't think Virginia Tech is on board with Justin Fuente being an asshat. I think he's Ooh. turned the corner in terms of his his likability at the program. I think everyone's pretty stoked about what he did to fill in for Bud Foster, right? Hiring within yeah. Yeah. former players. Guess who's in the house now? Daryl Tapp. What yep. happens immediately? They bring in a four-star from Texas yep. at the defensive line position. They're bringing in legit defensive line talent that, that Virginia Tech's never seen because they don't typically recruit. They recruit guys like Daryl Tapp. Yeah. Who are scrappy and they get to the NFL because they work hard, not because they're six foot four, two hundred and fifty pounds. So something's happening here. And I gotta be honest, between the Mike Young and and and, and not reacting and firing Justin Fuente just to pay him twenty five million dollars, I think the program is bought in on this Virginia Tech team, and I think it's disrespectful to only be laying two and a half in the backyard of the ACC. Beautiful Charlotte, North Carolina. <laughs> Give me the Okies. I got my new Virginia Tech shirt. Got this for quit Christmas. Nice. Colby. Nice. Uh, I'm, mm. I'm, I'm going to co-sign this. Oh. Mainly, look, originally I was going to pick Kentucky in this game, but I Stop forgot. Stop it. I forgot it's Bud Foster's last game. Oh. Bud Foster's. You saved my last note. La- last game. And then another thing to pay attention to is Kentucky is still starting Lynn Bowden, their third mm. string quarterback, converted wide receiver. He cannot throw the ball, so Bud Foster is going to stack the line. They're going to blitz this guy, and uh, give me give me Virginia Tech all day on this one. I like this play. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've kind of liked uh, Kentucky in a couple spots here so far this season, but uh, unfortunately, off the ride with Virginia Tech, I do think 
Kramer laid out a pretty good case as far as the motivation, and that seems to be what matters in college football. Well, moving and, on. Well, real quick, last thing I'll point out is on if you if you're one who follows like senior days and Virginia Tech had a comically like five guys, five seniors on this team. So that's another area, right? If you're going to be checked out, sometimes those senior late laden teams, yeah, and they it's it's a it's a mediocre mediocre bowl appearance. Maybe you check out. I think in this case, a lot of young guys. Yeah, we don't we don't normally record on Tuesday mornings. Colt, or what what is today? Why why is the gardener here? Who knows what's going on outside? <laughs> so let's move on to the the Sun Bowl. The Sun Bowl, December thirty first, New Year's Eve, eleven a.m. kick in El Paso, Texas. Arizona State squares off against FSU. Florida State plus one sixty on the money line. ASU minus one ninety. Total sitting at fifty four and a half. Colby, what are you doing here? Uh. You know, this strictly – there's like 20 players sitting out of this game because they're going pro. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I, Cam Akers is sitting out. Uh, Arizona State's running back, wide receiver Darby's out, sitting out. Uh, Florida State corner just announced he's not going to play. So, I mean, there's a lot of players sitting out. But I will say Arizona State has Jaden Daniels. He's a, he's a remarkable freshman that will be, I think, in the NFL in a few years. And they have Herm Edwards. You yep. play to win the game. There you go. Uh, Florida State's still coachless. Uh, what's his Norvell can't coach until uh, after after this game. So give me the Sun Devils minus the four and a half. Florida State shouldn't even have been in a bowl this year. Uh, I was going to say, like, let's uh, real quick. I, I think I missed on this uh, for the last game, though. Part of the Belk Bowl, uh, part of the swag bag is a shopping trip to a Belk department store. Whew. Who's getting excited Whew. about this? Whew. What are they doing? <laughs> Stop it. Um, listen, are you both listening? Is the audience yes. listening? Because listening, Ryan. Florida State you, is – You've hit the over on listens. <laughs> Florida State is garbage. This is the Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl, and Tony the Tiger is all about effort, right? All about <laughs> slamming those sugary cornflakes in your mouth. Another thing is uh, El Paso is really cl close to Juarez. Well, <laughs> Those Florida State guys are going to go down there, get some prostitutes, some blow, some ecstasy, you know. Maybe some fentanyl, yeah. right? <laughs> it is a border town. Arizona State is much more accustomed to being on the border. Yeah. Florida, it, it's just water. The, the Florida yeah. State kids, they, they're surrounded by cows and then water, so it's a little safer. They're going to be excited by this. Yeah, uh, this is. Well, you mentioned you mentioned uh, Frosted Flakes, Tony the Tiger, and also is Herm Edwards. And I think <laughs> if Frosted Flakes ever loses their spokesman, Tony the Tiger, Herm Edwards would be an amazing replacement because <laughs> he's great. Yeah. I mean, well, how can you go against Herm Edwards in a bowl game? They they'll get up for this game. Give me ASU uh, again. Yeah, a lot of like crazy people sitting out, but. Gun to my head, I'm just going to take the guy with some big game experience, like my boy Herm. Keeping it on New Year's Eve, Liberty Bowl, 1245 kick. Kansas State squares off against Navy. Navy lane two and a half, the midshipman minus 135 on the money line. KSU plus 115, total sitting at 52 and a half. Colby, what are you doing here? I'm riding the Wildcats, Kansas State. You get a month to prepare for the triple option. I know Navy's played great this year, but. Kansas State, underrated, great first year. Chris Kleiman, former North Dakota State head coach, really exceeded my expectations under the first year. Uh, so, I, I, giving him a month to prepare for the triple option, I'm all about this, man. K-State with the points. Just take the money line on this. It's K-State money line. Uh, I'm going to steal this from the Cover 3 podcast, Colby. What's that? You, military schools, 12-5 yeah. and five against the spread this decade. In bowls? In bowls. Yep. I'm well, taking Navy. I love America, Colby. Well, a lot of times, though, they'll love play, America. They're playing UTEP. Love you know I mean? America. How about you? Co Sean, you love America here? Minus two. I half. love America. I also love winning. And I'm going to combine my two loves by selecting Navy minus two and a half. You know, Army had, what, uh, three decades to prepare for the triple option. Didn't stop them from getting their, uh, their shit pushed in in the military ball there. Or whatever you call it, the Army Navy game. Uh, <laughs> Navy is just, Navy's just good, man. Like they, uh, I don't know. I think they're tough to match up against. Even if you know, you know the triple option's coming. I, I just don't know if Kansas State has the type of players that can slow it down. I, I don't think it's n always a prep time thing. I think it helps, but I think you have to have the, the guys that that can really defend well, it. And I don't, I don't think Kansas State does. Well, and I would also ask the one way to take like we've seen this from history, right? The way to the way to take down our Navy is is from a sneak attack through the air. 
And I don't think Kansas is going to be capable of pulling that off against this Navy team. Skylar Thompson. There, don't sleep on Skylar Thompson. I was making Thompson. a tasteless Pearl Harbor joke, but that, it went uh, over. There again. will be no Pearl Harbor <laughs> at the Liberty Bowl. <laughs> Beautiful. Arizona memory. Bowl in ha- happening in Tucson, Arizona, Wyoming. Seven point favorite against Georgia State. Minus 260 on the money line from Wyoming, Georgia State plus 210. Total sitting at 49. Colby, what are you doing here? Uh, I'm all over Georgia State here, and I can tell you this is one of my favorite plays. Um, Really? uh, Mainly because Wyoming, starting quarterback Sean Chambers, out for the year, happened, I think, what, late October, early November, and then their backup decided to transfer in the past two weeks. Oh, no. So now you're on a third-string quarterback. That's not good. You And let me tell you something. Sean Chambers was their best passing quarterback, and he wasn't a very good passer. Georgia State. First time, I mean, look, th- this team was t- terrible last year. Dan Ellington, senior quarterback. I like what Elliott's doing at Georgia State. I mean, I like what Bulls doing at, at Wyoming, too, but seven points in Tucson. Give me the Georgia State Panthers to get this done. I, I mean, why are they dogs? Uh, I mean, I actually thought Wyoming was the better team if if they had Chambers. Yeah, but why are they, yeah. why are I, they a touchdown dog yeah, in this it spot? Should not and be. most importantly yeah. – we're, this is not a podcast that is going to make a living taking teams named Cowboys. So <laughs> let's uh, let's not overthink it. Give us the and we love uh, what Georgia State. That was the head coach from March Madness, right? That we all love. Yes, yeah. yes. So yeah. let's go with Georgia State. He's at Tulane now. Yeah, right? I'm riding. I'm riding Georgia State as well. Got to fade the Cowboys, especially when Dak is exposed as the fraud he is and Zeke's cry. I, I mean, you know, that's this is the ironically. Uh, Jason Garrett will be coaching the Cowboys next year. The Wyoming Cowboys. <laughs> Give me Georgia State. I like Wyoming's passing game, but Colby nailed it. Like, not with a third string quarterback. Utah scores off against Texas in the Alamo Bowl. Oh, man. It's going to be tough to fade Texas in the Alamo Bowl. 430 kick in San Antonio. The Utes, seven point favorites, minus 270 on the money line. Texas plus 220, total sitting at 55. Colby, what are you doing here? Uh, I know Kyle Whittingham has an unbelievable bowl record, but the fact that this game is being played about an hour south of Austin, Texas, I am all over Texas here. <sighs> this is a tough one, man. I'm all over Texas. Te- doesn't Texas just perpetually disappoint, though? But I feel like this, that Utah's kind of already blew their season. You know what I mean? They had their chance. Isn't this the redemption, like the, the get-back angle? Isn't this where you like a well-coached team. I don't like them more than seven points, though. To bounce back. I don't like Utah outside of Salt Lake City. I never liked you, them you, more than seven points, favorite. You've been holding strong with that one. Yeah. Now, the, the, the here's where I struggle. I, I just – I really have a hard time taking Texas. I'm kind of with you, but I'm going to stick to my drug. This year, my drug was Utah. I thought they would ha- make a chance. they make a run at the playoff. They, they fell short because of their inability to play away from home. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go back to that drug because I just don't see Texas. Sure, I get it. There's going to be lots of Texas fans here. There's going to be lots of Texas fans no matter where they play. Well, especially that. That's only an hour. Yeah, hour and, and there's and there's a lot of Texas fans, and there's a lot of Texas fans that are really pissed at the program and want them to completely yeah. blow things up. Exactly. And if you ever, if you ever bet against, uh, against Texas, it's pretty awesome because – you just fire up Twitter, and uh, as they're losing and not covering and just looking horrible, you can just see all the Texas fans coming out of the woodwork, pitching and moaning. They've had a ton of money. They really have no excuses. Utah, uh, again, I think the high elevation practices give them a little bit of conditioning because you've been off for a month. I think the high elevation, uh, you know, you're practicing in high elevation. Give me a little bit of a conditioning edge here. I, I I like Colby's angle of Texas in Texas, but I, I think Utah actually is the play here. Minus seven. Very good team. Kind of fucked it up uh, against Oregon. But other than that, they were very strong this season. Moving on to the New Year's Day Bowls. The Citrus Bowl, 10 a.m. West Coast kick. Michigan squares off against Alabama. Bama, minus seven uh, point favorite. Minus 265 on the money line. Michigan plus 215, total sitting at 58. Kobe, what are you doing here? I'm taking the Wolverines plus seven. Mm. I think all the money's going on Bama. Bama's with the backup quarterback. They Also, the motivation factor. Last time Bama didn't make the playoff, Oklahoma whooped their ass. Uh, and I think it was the Sugar Sugar Bowl, I think, if memory serves me correct. Um, same situation here. Michigan, Michigan's got everything they want to get up for. This could <clears throat> be a huge statement for recruiting for Harbaugh. 
Um, I, I expect Michigan to, to, to come out and compete in this game, and, and if not win it outright, give me the seven points. It's now the VRBO. Vacation rental by oh, owner, no. Citrus Bowl. Move over, move over, Airbnb, VRBO. Already knocking the, on your door. <laughs> already the best swag bag I've seen, just because they get a four hundred dollar Best Buy gift card. Wow, you can at least yeah, use that yeah. for something useful. Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, this is the classic. Like nobody has it. <laughs> who has it better than us? Nobody, right? <laughs> like yeah. this is the classic. Jim Harbaugh does something good when it doesn't matter. Yeah. And while Alabama is Alabama, if there's going to be a squad that's not motivated to show up, it's this Alabama. Team. What worries me is that it is a big, it's a big matchup. Michigan is, but when Alabama in the Citrus Bowl, that just doesn't sound right. Um, I'm sure their fans are very upset. We're going to hear a lot of SEC, SEC, yeah. but let's go with Michigan in the points here. I'm taking the cat. Wait a second. I told myself I wouldn't take the khaki panted guy. <laughs> hey. You, you know what? Fuck Jim Harbaugh. Give me uh, Nick Saban. I, I don't. I, I'm not getting involved in this game. <laughs> you're right. Michigan's the side. Let's go. Michigan plus seven. I'm doing it again. Yeah, I'm also. I'm also riding Michigan plus seven. Um, I don't know. I do think there is some motivation for Saban to really shove uh, <laughs> shove Harbaugh in a locker here. But I, 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 Alabama's defense has quietly been kind of rough lately. I mean, what did they let up to uh, Auburn? I don't know. And, and you throw in the backup quarterback angle and they're expected to cover seven points. Michigan, Michigan's going to like lose by six points. So yeah, give me Michigan plus seven. They're going to figure out a way to be in this game for a long time and then cover, but not win the game. I kind of see that scenario playing out. Minnesota, the Gophers trying to make a run at the college football playoff came up short. Auburn, uh, seven and a half point favorite in the Outback Bowl in Tampa, Florida, Auburn minus 270 on the money line. Minnesota plus 220. Total sitting at 53. Colby, what are you doing? I'm riding Auburn here. Um, look, <coughs> Wisconsin, oh, when Minnesota had their chance to go to the Big Ten Championship. Wisconsin yeah. came into uh, Minneapolis and ran down their throats. Well, guess what Auburn can do? They can run down your throat because Auburn can't really throw the ball. But they're, much, they're very similar to Wisconsin from an offensive standpoint. But they also have maybe the best defensive line in football. So I expect them to get after uh, the Minnesota offense, shut down the Minnesota running game, and I just think this is a bad spot for Minnesota. Give me the Auburn Tigers minus seven and a half. I think Auburn rolls. Meanwhile, the Outback Bowl only a hundred twenty-five dollar Amazon gift card, but you do get an Outback Steakhouse gift card. So if you're <laughs> one of those blooming onion, John Madden is going to be buying a lot of these on the secondary market. Get a um, boomerang burger. Uh, here, all right, so <laughs> we 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 discussed this all the time travel matters uh, uh, this one's in tampa so uh, it, we we, we kind of have to take a quick deep dive into which team which team is going to be a little bit more excited to clubs. be amongst the strip club yeah, capital yeah. of the world outside of vegas well i don't think there's much strip club attending going on as they row the boat down from minnesota you know what i think you know, you know who does Auburn condone strip club <laughs> Auburn, SEC schools. Are you rowing the boat? I am rowing the boat. Wow. Too many points. These dudes are definitely going to be hungover. New Year's Day in Tampa, Florida? That's a good angle. What yeah. else are they doing? It's a good angle. This is this is a – I mean, this Minnesota team was really good. Yeah, they got pushed around by Wisconsin. But, I mean, they were kind of playing out of their minds there for a little while. I think the, the time off gets them a chance to regroup. They're going to get fired up for this – game i mean the outback bowl minnesota's jazz to be at the outback bowl midwest loves outback they're going to be playing hard for <laughs> outback it's it's also it's seven and a half points i mean yeah. minnesota is a team that's just covered spreads this year six two and one ats in their last nine i mean auburn's been good against the spread as well i, I just think the motivations there and I, I think they come back and kind of I think they're really motivated. And it does seem like not many of the public, according to the spread consensus over on Odd Shark, only 34% of the people are taking Minnesota at seven. Yeah, it's so a seven, seven and a half. Seven, I love it. 7.30 split, Sean. Do you see? Do you remember what Auburn did to Purdue last year in the bowl game? Yeah, I know, 10 team? I know, I know. Brutal. Just a I, brutal I, You're right. This yeah. could be one of those moments. But I'm, I'm, I think I've picked against every SEC school so far on this show, and I might continue to do so. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. Except, wow. for L, except for LSU. Or will I? Yeah. Or say, will right? I? I'm on Auburn. 
All right. Oops. And now we're on to talking about PropSwap.com. New sponsor to the podcast, but we've talked about PropSwap many a times. You're always seeing on Twitter people buying and selling these uh, sportsbook tickets, and a lot of times they're from PropSwap.com because PropSwap is America's marketplace to buy and sell sports bets. All season long, uh, PropSwap customers have been finding some of the best odds in the world. And again, you're buying the bet from another person and not betting against the house, so you can always find great deals. And you can either buy or sell on PropSwap. It's really easy to use. Uh, It's pretty cool. In fact, uh, this past week, an LSU football, uh, LSU championship ticket with a collect amount of 12,400 was purchased on PropSwap for 6,400. So basically someone bought a LSU ticket at plus 170. Now you're not gonna get LSU to win the title at plus 170 at any other sportsbook. So great opportunity if you're looking to hedge, if you have a long shot bet, uh, or or if you wanna buy up someone else's ticket, they're looking to hedge out. Or, you know, again, it just gives you a ton of options and uh, you can buy or sell. Hey, you could get a uh, Dallas Cowboys to win the 2020 NFL <laughs> championship. <laughs> Wouldn't recommend buying that one. But let's say you believe in the Steelers, right? There's, I'm looking at a Steelers ticket right now. It's only 33. Uh, the price is 33 bucks. There's, there's, uh, there's parlays that are going on here as well. Uh, Seattle Seahawks to win the division. You know, you could be, you're getting a better price than you probably would be if you're just betting the money line against Seattle. So, tons of opportunities over there. Prop swap and. To make things better. That's right. A hundred percent match on your first deposit. That's right. One hundred percent match. All you got to do, use that promo code SGP, deposit up to a hundred dollars and they will match it up to a hundred dollars. Go to PropSwap.com. Use a promo code SGP. PropSwap.com. Void where prohibited. Of course. Right. Nice Moving work, over Sean. to the road. Thank you. Wisconsin minus two and a half. Uh, minus 140 on the money line. Oregon. Plus 125, 51 and a half is the total. Oregon, a team I thought was going to get in the college football playoff, came up just short. Unfortunately, that Auburn loss week one really came back to haunt them. Uh, and, and of course, the collapse against uh, Arizona State. I'm going to ride Oregon here again, uh, getting two and a half points. Should be a, This should be an exciting game. Um, but, yeah, I'll go Oregon two and a half. I think they got their confidence back beating Utah. And uh, I think this is a good game, but I, I think they're used to playing in the Rose Bowl, very comfortable there. So yeah, give me Oregon plus two and a half. Yeah, I was shocked at this line. Something uh, this game smells to me because I don't know how Wisconsin's favored. Mm. You know what I mean? Wisconsin uh, lost at Illinois, lost at Ohio State. When they, they hit the when they don't play in Camp Randall, they're not that they're not that good. <clears throat> now the downside of this is that Mario Cristobal is Oregon's head coach, and he can find ways to lose games yeah. with any fucking team. Um, <laughs> but but I, I, I will – He's not a good coach. He's and horrible. not enough like, is he, spoken about his inability to coach in the game. I've watched – being on the West Coast, you end up catching more Pac-12 games because of timing. Good recruiter, and bad coach. It, well, it, he's the classic yeah. example of puts great talent on the field, but once yeah. they get on the field, he's not – maximizing efficiency at all yeah. if anything he's in the same camp as andy reed when it comes to his ability to manage a clock for example yeah and we've yeah. seen it a couple of games oh, man. probably cost him Washington some wins State, the stanford yeah. game last year so to your yeah. point why is wisconsin favored coaching coaching yeah. but coaching. i just think I mean, talent wise oregon's is so much more talented could be and we are entering pac-12 territory and uh, but i've picked way too many pac-12 teams and i think in general the pac-12 uh not not a conference I love to back in this season, and I think here's a situation where we're now another month re- removed from the recruits getting on campus, right? For a coach like Cristobal, the further away we are from that person getting on talent, the less likely I, I have confidence that they're going to have an edge over the teams they're playing. Meanwhile, we look at Wisconsin. I hear you, everything you say about them sucking on the road. They are a superior team from a preparation standpoint when they have this much time to prepare. So give me Wisconsin but minus two and a half. Doesn't it scare you that they can't throw the ball though? Uh, give me Wisconsin. I, I'm you're gonna. This is gonna. I'm favoring. I made a decision. Big Ten, ACC this year. I'm backing as because they show up. They they Cause, show cause up. Because the ACC spots. look great. 
look great yesterday. I'm telling you, right? they're gonna. If we're just talking <laughs> Miami, no. I, well, Pitt also needed a, yeah, a fourth right. quarter comeback. That was a little surprising. Yeah. That was surprising. All right, let's go. Big Ten. Wisconsin minus two and a half. Sean. Yes. Let's talk about the Sugar Bowl. Baylor squaring off against Georgia. Georgia's six point favorite. 5:45 kick New Year's Day. Bay, uh, Georgia minus 225 on the money line. Baylor plus 185. Total sitting at 41 and a half. Colby, start things off. What are you doing? Uh, this game's a. T- I like this line. This was at like seven, seven and a half, and I loved Baylor at six. I'm still gonna take Baylor. I don't feel great about this game, but I mean, I know Swift is going pro. I I wonder. This, is Georgia motivated to be in this spot? Now, they are in New Orleans, which you would think that I would I would guess that most of the uh, the Bulldog fans would come down to New Orleans, get fucked up for New Year's. Um, however, I, I still got to ride with the six points. Georgia has not been that impressive to me this year. I do think Georgia's going to win this game. I just don't – I just don't think I, – I think the line's a little too big. Y- yes. Uh, Kramer? Yeah, no. Li- li- Georgia has – been a consistent letdown team when they're when they're in a spot where you, you they're getting a big number granted this number was a lot juicier on the other side of seven yeah uh i would also uh caution you uh, where where, uh, where does baylor play waco waco oh so they're on the other side of the state yeah all right uh yeah i don't know i mean i i matt rule as a dog is generally a spot you want to be in yeah so i'm gonna yeah. even though it's now six i'm gonna take the dog uh yeah, I mean, I'm I've I've been all over uh, you know Baylor this season. I mean, man, they really had a chance, um, uh, you know, to to really get into the college football. I, I was I was trying to uh, I was just double checking um, their starting quarterback here, but uh, yeah, Charlie Brewer he's expected to play, so I like that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this team is just – again, Matt Rule is a great coach. I'd be really scared if he ends up on the Giants um, or anywhere in the NFC. He's, like, uh, on the Cowboys. But I don't think either of those franchises are smart enough to take a class act like Matt Rule. The guy just wins games. He gets players up for these games. And at plus six, I think uh, this is a good spot for them. And, again, Matt Rule has a dog. It just is that simple. Birmingham Bowl. January 2nd, noon kick, Boston College, Cincinnati in Birmingham, Alabama. Cincinnati, minus 7 favorite, minus 275 on the line. BC, plus 225, total sitting at 55. Colby, what are you doing? I hate this game. Give me Cincinnati, minus 7. I don't know what <laughs> Can the... you lay 7 points with Cincinnati ever? Well, BC no. doesn't have their coach. But, but, what, losing Adazio, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well... Adazio was like a, a college football version of Jason Garrett. Based on his personnel. Except for everyone hated him. Based on his personnel, though, because A.J. Dillon's not playing, yeah, right? I, know. I, I don't know what the hell to think of this game. I, I, Cincinnati's the better team. They should not be playing a 6-6 six and six Boston College team. This no. is This is the, the bowl committee people being horrible at assigning bowl games. How is a 10-win team playing... Boston, a six and six Boston College. Well, they're that they're be trying bowling. to get fans that will actually go to Birmingham, Alabama, for a bowl game. I'm taking Cincinnati minus seven. I don't feel good about this. I don't advise my clients to bet. I'm this being game. contrarian. I'm give me Boston College. <laughs> Boston College. Huh? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, I haven't followed either team a ton, but um, yeah, Cincinnati minus seven. They've just won a bunch of games. It's just that simple. Give me Cincinnati minus seven. I, I, I mean, you think you think Boston College is going to have fans that come down here? I, I don't see either fan base showing up. Maybe Cincinnati, but again, think, it's the I, Birmingham Bowl. I think Boston College has a strangely large alumni base in Alabama. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Boston College has more fans there than Cincinnati. Uh, Although I, Cincinnati to Birmingham might be an upgrade, so maybe they'll be heading down. <laughs> hey, it's an early spring break, y'all. All right, yeah, horrible. It's a lateral game. move. Horrible game. Uh, keeping it going on the second. Tennessee squares off against Indiana in the Tax Slayer Bowl. Goodbye taxes. Tennessee minus one and a half favorite, minus one thirty-five. Indiana plus one fifteen. Total sitting at fifty-one and a half. Kramer, what are you doing here? Why are we doing this? Why are we having these games between New Year's and the 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 following week filled with shitty teams? Yeah. Couldn't we just do like a gigantic playoff? Why like what is the point of waiting? Why does Tennessee like what did Tennessee do this year that allows them to get an extra week of practice from some of these teams yeah. that actually deserve it? 
I, I, if you're going to do if, – if baking a bowl is going to be a reward – and the main point of that reward for the program is an extra month of practice. Why are you giving 25% more to reward yeah. to a team like Tennessee, which God awful. Yeah. God. Seven and five, seven and five and all of their wins came because the sec East is horrible. I, I I'm just fading the sec. I'll, I'll wholesale. Give me the big 10 team. Give me Indiana plus the points. See, I'm, I'm heavy contrarian. I'm, I'm, angle I'm big here. on Tennessee here. Heavy contrarian. I think Tennessee angle. is trending in the right direction. Indiana just lost their offensive coordinator. He's the Fresno State's new head coach. This would be the angle where SEC, like SEC, the games <laughs> in Florida. No Indiana fans are going to this game. <laughs> All of Knoxville will go to this game. I expect wow, okay. Tennessee to win this game, and and I expect that this is this is lock material here. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Tennessee started out horrible and were, were kind of an embarrassment, but they, they have turned things around in the second half of the season. So, yeah, I'm also with you, Tennessee minus one and a half. If you want to have fun, on, if you want to have fun on the second, there's two games. Have the contra- Make a contrarian parlay of Indiana with Boston College, both on the money line. Listen, Tennessee still hasn't beat a good team this year. Precisely. Indiana, <laughs> good team. Well coached. No, Indiana's not a good team. <laughs> well coached team. Uh, <laughs> January 3rd, the Idaho Potato Bowl, Ohio, minus eight against Nevada in Boise, Idaho. <laughs> Nevada plus 250 on the money line, Ohio, minus 310. 58 and a half is the total. Colby, what are we doing? <laughs> Look, I love my guy, Frank Solich and, uh, and Nathan Rourke at Ohio, but eight's too big of a number. Nevada's not. Yeah. Look, Reno and Boise, not a far trip. Um, Smurf turf, uh, just. Give me the eight points on this. You know, like, it's just too many points. This should be, like, a three-point spread, I feel like. Ohio might be the better team, but, hey, I don't even think I agree with that because I, I think the uh, Mountain, West, Mountain West is kind of underrated. Give me uh, Nevada plus the eight points. It's only a six-hour drive. Now, granted, here's the part that's tough. It's cold as shit. Yeah. Uh, but, again, Ohio laying the points, I, I don't love that situation. W- which you might want to pay attention to, though, because Nevada does run the air raid Mike Leach uh, offense in some cold weather. Ohio much more of kind of a uh, shotgun reach, a lot of run-heavy uh, I'm with you, though. Too many points. Too many Nevada. Yeah. yeah, it does. This number feels, uh, feels a bit high, plus eight. Uh, yeah, I mean – is Ohio really going to blow out Nevada? I think Nevada will be up for this game. I, I think they have strong motivation here. Again, I, eight points seems like a lot. I thought that was your agent. You were going to leave mid episode oh, to, wow. to another yeah. podcast. <laughs> he's got, it. He's got yeah. another opportunity. <laughs> yeah, I just got to shout out to the kids. I know you're you're doing everything you can out there. All right, sorry, I got a I got a better deal. I'm going to be heading over to the Ringer podcast. Fuck you guys. <laughs> oh no no no! If you're if the kids leave, they want to leave. They got to sit out of here. Coaches though, yeah. they don't have to yeah. sit out of here. Yeah, year. exactly. Wouldn't that be a great oh, and, rule? <laughs> speaking of uh, speaking of January third, I will be down in uh, San Diego headlining the Bay Bridge Brewing Company in Chula Vista, California, and uh, on the fourth uh, in San Diego as well at Twigs Coffee Company. So January third and fourth, I'll be down in San Diego headlining uh, some comedy shows. Nice. January fourth, the Armed Forces Bowl. Although I don't know why. Why don't they just default Navy into here? 8.30 a.m. 8, 8.30 a.m. West Coast kick. Tulane squaring off against Southern Mississippi. Tulane, a seven-point favorite, minus 265 on the money line. Southern Miss, plus 215. Total sitting at 56.5. Kramer, what are you doing? I'm wondering why we're talking about a game uh, on a Saturday. But I was actually more thinking about, like, wow, Sean's, Sean's missing more quality podcast time out of town for the NFL playoffs. Jesus Christ. Priorities. No, I'll be I'll be here for the uh, I'll be don't worry I'll be there for the Sunday pregame Paris. Oh, Cup but not the Saturday games. I see. Uh, picking and <laughs> well, choosing he's... when the podcast is important to you, Sean. Uh, yeah, Tulane, Southern Miss. Uh, what are you going to do here? Uh, this is just a uh, historic <laughs> battle amongst juggernauts who are. Uh, you wouldn't believe this. The Armed Forces Bowl this year, sponsored by Lockheed Martin. They're uh, they're giving out a special edition coin. These bowl games and their fucking coins. Also a neck pillow, which uh, I did receive a neck pillow for for Christmas. I'm quite excited about it. So I could see these players being very excited for a neck pillow. I don't know if they have that problem yet. They're maybe too young. Uh, I've said a lot of words to say. 
Uh, I, I have no actual take on this game other than give me Southern Miss, right? Brett Favre went there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> send, like send a dick pic to somebody. Yeah. All right. Now look, I, I'm I'm gonna back this one too. I mean, oh look, wow, I, so my logic makes sense. Nice. I, I'm a Willie Fritz guy. I know he's got a slamming hot wife, but yeah. um, the green <laughs> the, the green wave. Look, they're coming into Frisco, Texas. All right, there's no wave there. All right. No. Uh, Tulane's gonna get the win. Give me Tulane 24, Southern Miss 21. Uh, t- give me the seven points in Southern Miss. Tulane points per game, thirty-three point three. Southern Miss twenty-seven point seven five rushing yards. This is where Tulane has a huge advantage, two hundred forty-nine point eight rushing yards per game compared to Southern Mississippi's one twenty-two point four. Tulane is going to run it down their throat and run up the score. I got Tulane in a blowout, wow. uh, minus seven easily. Next up, Lending Tree Bowl, right before we get to the college football playoffs. But the Lending Tree Bowl, January 6th, 430 kick. Everyone's going to be talking about it. Miami of Ohio squaring off against Louisiana Lafayette in Mobile, Alabama. Why are these games in Alabama? I don't understand. Yeah, how does it's that? bowl country, baby. Louisiana Lafayette, minus 14, a favorite, minus 570 on the money line. Miami of Ohio, plus 420, total sitting at 55 and a half. Colby, what are you doing? I just uh, can we play this in games in some cold climates? I, I just feel like it's just <laughs> ridiculous. Um, I look, I, I like Louisiana Lafayette and, and Levi Jones or not Levi Jones, Levi Lewis, but Miami, Ohio, 14 points. Give me the Red Hawks and 14 points all day. I have zero faith in Louisiana Lafayette being this big of a <laughs> favorite. So I'll take I'll take the 14 in the Red Hawks. You don't like the raging Cajuns. Uh, I love the Raging Cajuns. Because last Brian I checked, Mitchell went there. Last I checked, we Tigers. Oh, we, we, are, we are Tigers. Tigers. So I'm going to take the Raging Cajuns. Enough said. Minus 14. Minus you feel good 14. About that. Give, it, give it to Please me. Please have this be your lock. It's not going to be my lock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm annoyed we're still talking about games. Let's go. Sean, what do you think on this Colby, one? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll roll with the Raging Cajuns. You got, I mean, you know, it's just an awesome name. Give me, give me Louisiana <laughs> Lafayette. Uh, minus 14 there. And, uh, you know, yeah, Raging Cajuns all day, baby. <laughs> all right, we will be talking about the college football playoff in just a second. But before we do, time to talk about trimming our bush, courtesy of manscaped.com. That's right. Use that promo code SGP. You get 20% off and free shipping over at manscaped.com. Oh, Manscaped. It's a real, real life changer. I saw uh, manscaped.com. They tweeted out a message they received on their Facebook wall that a, uh, a, a gentleman received a Manscaped lawnmower 2.0 from his wife for Christmas. And he said his, uh, his streak of not receiving oral for 20 plus years was broken <laughs> thanks to Manscaped 2.0. And he said, uh, he said it was a great night. She even took out her teeth. So uh, that is a woman. 20 that's years? Committed to 20 years. Quite the uh, dry spell there. And, <laughs> hey, maybe – why not uh, – Get a prostitute. You know, we talk about, <laughs> right. Get a prostitute. And if you're getting a prostitute, you want to be clean-shaven, all right? You don't want to catch – you don't want to get crabs with a prostitute. You want a nice, trimmed-down area. And, again, it's a business transaction. You want to make sure your business partner – is getting the best view and uh, vice versa. So again, fire up the lawnmower 2.0. Again, a powerful 6,000 strokes per minute. That's SPMs, baby. And uh, much, much higher than the 4,000 SPMs in the original lawnmower 1.0. Again, I've used it. I don't go, uh, I don't go 100% off. I go 20% off. <laughs> Keep things like, like much like the SGP promo code. Trip things down, don't go full. Don't go full 100% off. And again, just the perfect time. You know, no one wants to play on that long grass. It slows down the score. And you want, you want it that trim trim area. You want that field turf, the Astro turf, so you can run up the score. And uh, it's still your air raid offense. So again, manscaped.com, promo code SGP. Your balls will thank you. Free shipping and 20% off. 20 years. Okay, so- I can't get over this. Was he yeah, in jail? Was 70, he in jail? Maybe. Maybe was he, he, he had to be in jail. Maybe, maybe, right? she, maybe the fake teeth were a hindrance. Who knows? <laughs> well, Congratulations it, to him. 
Well, she said he said just twenty percent dry st- spell when it comes to receiving oral. So maybe you know maybe it was just anal only. I don't know what they do in their relationship. <laughs> but either way, twenty years a long, long time. Speaking of uh, speaking of anal, it's the college football playoff Peach Bowl. I'll send those peach emojis when you're talking about butts. One o'clock kick on December twenty eighth. Oklahoma Boomers Sooners. Uh, 14 point dogs against LSU. LSU minus 555 on the money line. Oklahoma plus 405. Total sitting at a whopping 76. Colby, what are we doing here? I mean, everyone's loving LSU, Joe Burrow, Eddie O. We were on the Eddie O bandwagon early and often, but 14 points is a lot of points. Uh, I mean, look, I, I love my chicken on the stick Eddie O guy, but are you, you're giving the best offensive mind in college football a month to prepare against a guy who's not really known for his X's and O's and the flaw of the LSU team has been their defense. I'm all over Oklahoma on 14 points. And I dare, I say Uh sprinkle some on the money line Uh and the Sooners. Cause did you know a number one seed has never won out of the six years of our invitational bullshit? The top seed has never won the national championship. Uh, Colby. Yes. You are absolutely correct here. 14 points is extremely disrespectful. To I mean, look, do I have LSU plus 450 in my pocket? Am I thinking about heading to prop swap, maybe selling it? Sure, maybe. Hedging's kind of for pussies, but I'm thinking about it. Do I also have Ohio State plus 450? You bet your ass I do. Am I going to sell that? I'm thinking about it. But uh, 14 for LSU – LSU is winning this game. LSU beat Texas by only seven points. LSU is winning this game. LSU to cover 14, I just don't see it. Especially because we've seen Oklahoma navigate. We've seen Cliff Kingsbury specifically. Lincoln Riley. Sorry. Lincoln Riley <laughs> specifically navigate. I was thinking about the back door, so I thought Kyler Murray, Cliff, a lot of Oklahoma. To- <laughs> they know how to get in the back door. And if this team, if I don't even here's think the thing back with door, o- I think it's a dangerous. No, they're spot not winning the game. Here's the problem with this: they they have a quarterback that just he's not good enough to win this game. I think he's a chip on he's his shoulder. Enough, man. He's good enough. He's good enough. Not only is he good enough to cover this game, he's played in this building. This is SEC country. He's played this team. There's familiarity there. 14 points, way too much. And yeah, this is a mini hedge against my LSU to win the national Dude, championship. Sprinkle Oklahoma some on the money plus line the points. Here. Sprinkle some on the money line. Four to one's not bad. Yeah, but I, I think this is uh, this is just going to be a close game. 14 points seems way too crazy, especially if you look at the LSU's defense. They're averaging letting up 21.15 points per game, and that's and you look at Oklahoma's offense averaging 43.2 uh, points per game on offense, like. I, whether it comes in garbage time or when the game is still up for grabs, I just don't see this LSU team really uh, well, getting away from Oklahoma. I mean, Oklahoma has had moments. They're a bit schizophrenic as a team overall where they've looked really good. But for one game looked, with a month of preparation. Yeah, but if they have they've that, looked horrible. If they have that quarter where they give up, they, they just look like they can't stop anyone and they give up 21, 28 but, points. But see, I actually think yeah. their defense but is I, the best defense I've seen them have. Don't we? Yeah, I, I guess for me, seventy-six is a big number here to to me. But I'm not I, a total guy. I, yeah, I think what's going to happen is at some point Ellis or Oklahoma is going to have a couple drives back to back where they look really good and uh, are able to move the ball against the LSU offense. So I think there's gonna. I think Oklahoma's gonna put up thirty points, and I, I just I'm not gonna. Again, the total does seem high too, Kramer. I, I'm on board with you. We haven't seen right. LSU come from behind yet this year. Mm. If, if Oklahoma starts out hot, it's going to be interesting mm. to see what, what, what Burrow can do. Agreed there. Agreed there. All right. Fiesta Bowl, last game, December 28th, 5 o'clock kick. This Saturday, tomorrow, Glendale, Arizona, Ohio State, two-point dog, plus 105. Clemson, minus 125 on the money line. Total sitting at 63 and a half. No one's respecting this Clemson team. Uh, Davo, I know. I'm kind of making fun of Davo and, oh, and okay. his the the narrative he's feeding to this Clemson team. We got to win 35 games. No one believes in us. No one believes in us. I actually believe in this Clemson team because they really seem like they're buying in. Uh, 
you know, Ohio State, there's a lot of uh, big injuries on their side of the ball. I like Clemson at minus two. This Clemson team, since they kind of got like disrespected in their minds by not being included in that first, you know, four teams uh, when the college football playoff put out their ranking, he has got them motivated and playing super hard. And yeah, Clemson minus two. I'm all over it. So Colby, uh, what are you doing? Well, I'm going to step on Colby for a second because who exactly have they played? Yeah. During that stretch where they've been motivated that and wa- dominating That Wake teams. Forest team is loaded, buddy. Well, Wake may be one of the better teams they played, <laughs> but uh, they, they've just been stepping on ants, and now they, they face an actual football team. Uh, there is the angle. I mean, it, the one thing Dabo that is saying that's accurate is they won the national championship last year. Invitational. They, invitational. They won. <laughs> they were the best team last year. You would agree with that, yes? I would have liked to see a real playoff. I agree, but they yeah. were the best team. Yeah. yeah. They so they won last year. They returned. They returned not all the team, but now you're telling me that this team went undefeated and they're the third best team in the country. They're, that's the one angle where I think, like, yeah, if I was Dabo, they I'd lost be milk- a lot from last year. Though. True, yeah. but they were the number one team yeah. at the end of last season. They haven't been beat by anyone, and but now the they're ACC not. ACC is probably the seventh or eighth best conference. Agree. Yeah. Agree. But that's the one angle. Dabo's got a objective point. It's hard to argue with. And unfortunately, Vegas blew all of that up by making them the favorite. And I think I said this a, a number of weeks back. I'm just not getting in the way of this Ohio State juggernaut. Yeah. While Dabo and Clemson are quite good, uh, Fields in the squad, I just I like the fact that they've been tested. So give me Ohio State plus the point. I, I think it's a little sh- – while Clemson's great and, and, and they should have a chip, I'm a little surprised Ohio State's the dog. Me too. Me too. And I'm all over Ohio State here. I think uh, Ohio State defense – Trevor Lawrence, actually, I know this is tough to tell, but Shown in my weakness, opinion, sure. had a had a, a little bit of a down year. Smelling um, himself. Yeah. Trying so, to do too much. So I think Ohio State's going to put some pressure on him. And make, make He'll probably make some bad decisions. And uh, Ohio State's let, offense should be able to move. Let me bit. ask you this. Since I hold LSU and Ohio State national championship tickets, do I hedge with a Clemson future or do I just hedge or do I just hedge by taking Clemson? I, I'm, I'm a bit torn here, but anyway, I, I'm taking Ohio State in this single. Spot. You don't hedge. I don't hedge. You're no. right. That's for pussies. Well, or unless you see some great value and you head over to PropSoft.com, use the promo code SGP to get a 100% deposit bonus. I, I mean, I can't believe you guys are backing a guy that Justin Fields, his knee is not fully healed entering the festival. If a player is admitting he's 80 to 85 percent, that means he's really like 40 percent. I think that's going to be you're not worried about the Ohio State quarterback's they're, they're knee. On, they're only a year removed from the smoke and mirror system of Urban Meyer. So who knows what's true and what's yeah. false, right? <laughs> sure. He's wearing a brace. Great. We're just over reporting this game. Agreed. All right. Yeah, but it's a brace, and he says it's only 80. To, all right, enough enough shooting around. Let's get to it. Locked Dog and Tease presented by MyBookie.ag, promo code SGP, where you can play, win, and most importantly, get paid. Colby, kick things off. Who is your lock? My lock is going to be mm. Oklahoma with 14 points. Oh, look at you. <laughs> it's the easiest one on there. Look, I want to do Georgia State plus seven, but I mean – Okay, how about that for my for my my, my dog? Give me Georgia State plus two ten. They're going to win outright. Okay, and uh, for teasing sake here, let's go. Uh, give me Louisville plus eleven. Give me where are we at here? Give me Texas plus what is that? Thirteen. Uh, Thirteen. Give me Oregon plus eight and a half. And I, dare I say, you, you need to be a real maniac just to tease bowl games in general with the, <laughs> the variance of these scores. Sean, yes. my lock. Give me Penn State minus the seven. I think they roll. Ooh. I think they roll against Memphis. Yeah, uh, I, I think, like that. I think the coach situation's a, a real thing. Uh, Mississippi State is absolute trash. Give me Louisville plus 160 for my dog. And for my tease, drum roll, please. Give me. Ah. Uh, I really want to fade Tennessee, but Col- Colby's kind of talked me off the ledge there. But let's let's start with uh, let's tease Oklahoma up to twenty, because that's just a ridiculous number. Get, let's go Ohio State to eight, because I don't think Clemson's going to blow them out if they win that game. I also wanted to give you some college football playoff love there. And for the last leg of my tease, Texas trash. Give me Utah minus one. 
Ooh, yeah. Mm. All right. Uh, what am I going to do? Do I ride the... All right. So for my lock, give me Utah minus seven. Ooh-hoo-hoo. For my dog, give me... Give me a... Uh, Give me Baylor, man. I, I mean, come on. This Baylor team, they're special. I, I still think they got a little bit of juice in them. They kind of fell apart there against Oklahoma. It was kind of, I don't know. They were the perfect matchup for this Baylor team. But I love Matt Rule. So give me Baylor plus 25 for my tees. Yeah, Oklahoma up to 20. That's insane. Uh, Cincinnati down to minus one. I don't know. Again, why my tees in that game? But. Uh, it's, it's pretty easy a spot there. And then for the final leg of the tease, uh, give me Cincinnati. Or no, I already did Cincinnati down to one. Uh, let's see. I'd like – oh, yeah, Oregon up to eight and a half. They, they keep it – at the very least, they're within a touchdown there. It's a good play. Uh, FCS National Championship, oh. it's, at, it's at a pick. JMU, North Dakota State, Frisco, Texas. I'm on North Dakota State bonus pick. What do you got there, Kramer? Uh, John? Give me. Uh, I, I got. I had a lot of nice uh, nights in James Madison. So give me James <laughs> Madison. What do you What do you think of there, Sean? Bison strong. Give me North Dakota. There we go, man. It's just that easy. And of course, guys, we're cranking out this content over the Christmas holiday. Show us some love, rate, review, and subscribe, of course, on iTunes. Throw us a five-star uh, you know, rating, but more importantly, the reviews. The reviews are what uh, keep this content train rolling. And again, check everything out, sportsgamblingpodcast.com. Get the college experience, Colby's daily college basketball picks as well, and tons of great uh, content posts. we got our NFL Week 17 podcast, the DFS flow chart, which is really uh, pretty awesome. New writer, uh, John Boy, has been cranking that out. So all that content, again, sportsgamblingpodcast.com. And all completely free. Just hit up our sponsors. And, again, give us those reviews, best reviews. Always get some sweet, sweet merch for the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money grade, and he is Ryan. Just a special get well to LeBron James and his groin from the Sports Gambling Podcast. (laughs) Kramer, let it ride.